Hello, this is Dr. Mark Weirman, and this is a digestion overview. This overview will be involving the stomach, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, and the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. There are four cells that we'll be talking about in the stomach that are found in the gastric pits. The first one is the parietal cell, the next one is the chief cell, then the G cell, and then finally the D cell. It should be noted that the lower esophageal sphincter is located between the esophagus and the stomach. At the lower end of the stomach, we will find the pyloric sphincter. The parietal cell is going to secrete hydrochloric acid. The more hydrochloric acid is secreted, the pH is going to decrease, and eventually it will make it to pH around 2. The chief cells are responsible for secreting pepsinogen, which is an inactive proenzyme. This pepsinogen will turn into, or convert into, pepsin, when the pH in the stomach gets low enough, let's say around pH of 2. The G cells are going to secrete gastrin, and gastrin is a hormone that will enter into the blood system and come back to the parietal cells and stimulate the production of HCL. It will also stimulate the chief cells and the motility of the stomach. The D cells are going to secrete somatostatin. Somatostatin will move to the G cells and it will inhibit them. This will help with raising the pH levels in the chyme, so that way when it moves to the small intestine, it is more acceptable. The food will be digested in the stomach for two to four hours. At that point, it will start moving to the small intestine through the pyloric sphincter. It will only move in small amounts, a teaspoon by teaspoon. Next, we will discuss the ductwork around the gallbladder and the liver. The gallbladder is where bile is stored. The liver is where bile is created. The duct from the gallbladder is cystic duct. And then in the liver, you'll have a left and a right hepatic duct. The left and right hepatic ducts will come together to create the common hepatic duct. And when the com common hepatic duct and the cystic duct come together, it's called the common bile duct. The common bile duct will move closer to the duodenum, and it'll combine with the pancreatic duct to make the hepatopancreatic duct. Bile will be released here along with the pancreatic juices. Now let's discuss the hormones that are released at the duodenum. The four hormones are going to be secretin, cholecystokinin or CCK, GIP, gastric inhibitory polypeptide, and gastrin from the G cells. When the chyme is moved into the small intestine, its pH is going to be inappropriately low. So secretin is going to be released and secretin will go to the pancreas and tell the pancreas to release a buffer. This buffer is bicarbonate. This buffer will allow the pH to rise to around 7 or 8. When fat enters the duodenum, it's going to release CCK. CCK will do three things. The first thing it'll do is relax the hepatopancreatic sphincter. Then it will squeeze the gallbladder. Both those actions will allow bile to enter the duodenum. It will also travel through the blood to the central nervous system to decrease the hunger sensation. The increase of bile in the area will now increase the emulsification of that fat. When carbohydrates enter the duodenum, GIP is going to be released, and GIP is going to travel to the pancreas and tell the pancreas to release insulin, because in the near future, a lot of glucose is going to be absorbed. When a lot of undigested food enters the duodenum, this will stimulate the release of gastrin from the G cells. This gastrin will travel up to the stomach and stimulate the parietal cells, the chief cells, and also the motility of the stomach. This in turn will help the stomach digest more of the food and decrease the amount of undigested food coming into the duodenum. In the duodenum, we have a lot of villi and microvilli structures that create a brush border. Some of the enzymes released from the brush border will break down carbohydrates. For example, maltase will break down maltose, sucrase will break down sucrose, and then lactase will break down lactose. Lactose is the sugar that you'll find in milk or dairy products. Another enzyme released from the brush border is enteropeptidase. We will discuss its function soon. Some of the enzymes released from the pancreas will include pancreatic amylase, which breaks down carbohydrates, and pancreatic lipase, which will break down lipids or fats. Another enzyme released is going to be called trypsinogen. Trypsinogen is an inactive proenzyme. Trypsinogen will be converted into trypsin through the help of enteropeptidase, which was one of those brush border enzymes. Trypsin is an active enzyme that will help break down proteins. This is a basic overview of a portion of the digestive system, and I hope it helps you.